What's going on, Geminites? It's your boy, Gem Mint. I have another statue unboxing and review for you guys today. This time we have a custom bishop. Now, I've done a review on a custom bishop before. It was a more futuristic, modern looking one on top of a Nimrod Sentinel. This one is dope because it's inspired by the artist Boris Vallejo, who's actually one of my favorite painters. But we'll get into that later. Let's go ahead and get this guy out of the box and start looking at the pieces. Wow, I didn't realize there was an art box on this thing, man. Usually with customs, they just have the black styrofoam. Uh, this is from Bushi Collector. And man, he must have the same taste as me because you have the Boris Vallejo from the 1996 Marvel Masterpiece painting on this side. Then you have the 1992 Joe Jusco from Marvel Masterpieces. So <laughs> one of my two favorite artists on the same box, Bishop on the sides. Actually, what's funny, I think I impressed uh, the commissioner on this because when he showed me the statue, I said, oh, that's the Boris Vallejo piece. And he was shocked because most people didn't know where it came from. What's funny is, not only is that from the 96 Marvel Masterpieces, which are crazy expensive, it's card one out of the uh, six double impact cards, which I don't even have. I just have, what, uh, two, four, five, and six. So I'm missing one and three. This one card sold for $125 in February, and somebody made a best offer, uh, $160 or best offer in that same month. So it's funny because it's a great piece of artwork, and it's from a very scarce trading card set. Uh, that being said, let's take out the pieces, and we'll see what it looks like. All right, before we assemble it, let's just take a look at all the pieces here. So you have a couple of different gun options. You have this one here for his right hand. You have this switch out option for a left hand, kind of showcasing powers, which I always like. Got another right hand option, smaller handgun version. You have two different head sculpts, well actually three different head sculpts. You have two that you can switch out. This is his more modern bald look. He got the M tattoo on his face. I wonder if anybody has really got that tattoo. I always wondered that. Then you have, with the hair, he's got kind of like whited out eyes, but with a glowing effect to it. Or is that my lamp? <laughs> he got that nice mullet. And you get two different torsos. So you get this torso. What's funny, the commissioner told me that he only made this torso because he originally wanted to just have this, like the uh, Boris Vallejo artwork. But he's like, everyone was like, who is that? Is that um, Blade? So he pretty much just made this torso so people can have the costume version as well. Which I think is, you know, it's a good idea to have both. It's always nice to have those options. But I think this looks really cool. I love how the head is sculpted in. It doesn't come off. He does kind of have a blade haircut, I guess, now that I look at him. I like this torso. It looks really cool. Then you have... His legs here and his, his foot's a part of the base. You have a little sentinel base. Uh, it's not my favorite base. I think there's some things that they could have done better on this. But uh, let's put them together and see how it looks while he's all assembled. Alright, so let's go ahead and get him pegged in here. Alright, got him in. Let's start off with the Boris Vallejo look. All right, so really you're done with the assembly at this point, except for it does come with some of these uh, pieces of rebar. Man, good luck trying to figure out where all this stuff goes though. Let me see if I can find real quick. All right, so there's definitely a piece in the back. You know what? I'm def I'm just not going to even use these. All right. Anyway, so I really like. I mentioned this in the Spider-Man review. I really like taking uh, an artist's uh, interpretation and making a statue out of it. I think that's a, a really good look, and uh, they nailed this Boris Vallejo uh, Bishop, man. So let's go ahead and take a look at the other switch out options. Take off the torso here. Put on his traditional uniform. And let's go ahead with the bald head look. 
right, you got that there. There's actually a, a magazine. I don't know where the magazine is supposed to go. Oh, it's supposed to go on, on this one. Locked and loaded. Man, you know, I got to go big guns with this guy. All right. And you can either go regular fists or kinetic power. I got to go with the power. All right, let's see what this guy looks like. That looks cool, man. I'm digging Bishop. Got the full costume on. But the bishop I really know is the bishop with the mullet. Yeah, there we go. All right, cool. Lucas Bishop. You know, he first appeared in uh, Uncanny X-Men 282, but really only on the cover. I recently read that issue, and I don't even think he shows up at all. If he does, maybe the last panel... But it's credited as his first appearance because it is uh, he's on the cover as well. I think Will Sportasio did the artwork, even though a lot of people think it was uh, Jim Lee on the cover, but it wasn't. I uh, really like this, man. So I'm um, collecting X-Men. I'm going to try to put this up there next to Cable, see how they pair up. But let's do a little review on it. Uh, I really like the uh, Boris Vallejo uh, interpretation. The base, I, I mean, I've seen better bases. I, I, I can't lie here. I feel like that... I feel the base lacks some kind of detail, like in this area right here. I know it's supposed to be like a grassy kind of rocky area, but I just think it lacks detail. And with the sentinel hand, I mean, with other uh, statues, uh, the sentinel hands are done much more intricate. And this kind of feels like an afterthought with how the wires are coming out and with how it's just a smooth robot hand and everything. So that's really my gripe about this piece. Otherwise... I like how everything else looks. Uh, he's a big piece, too. Let's see, how tall is he? I mean, just going from the bottom of the base to his head looks pretty tall. At about 25 inches. You add that gun on top. It's about 28 inches. Because the base itself is pretty tall. Like It's looking like 6 inches until you, ha you get his feet. So... Kind of a taller base. I guess, I don't know if they really needed all that bottom part here. But the base has a lot of things going on. You got a lot of shells on the ground. You have this piece of like iron rod here. A lot of wiring and stuff on the ground there. He's got some plain uh, black boots. Costume has a little bit of texture into it, but I don't know if that was intentional or not. Classic blue and yellow, got his X logo, got his uh, trademark handkerchief scarf. Let's uh, do a couple other switch outs really quick. So that's the big gun. So you can switch it out with the smaller one if you don't want to have too much height. And then you can switch this out with his regular fist. If you want more of a plain look there. Okay, so cool Bishop Custom. I'm going to keep him in my X-Men collection until a better Bishop comes along. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to pose him like this. I mean, I think it looks better, but I don't know if it'll match the rest of the line. We'll have to just kind of play around and see. I'll have to show you guys at the end what I end up doing here. But uh, yeah, Bushi Collector Customs, a commissioner that's been in the game since back in the day. Let me know what you guys think about Lucas Bishop in the comments below. If you enjoy the content, hit the subscribe button in the gem on the left. And if you like the statue unboxing and reviews, hit the playlist on the right for all the other videos. Thanks for watching. You guys stay minty fresh. Peace.